Lupus Lupus is an autoimmune disease in which the body's immune system mistakenly attacks its healthy tissues and organs. Usually in a healthy person, the immune system protects the body from foreign invaders like viruses and bacteria. But in someone with lupus, the immune system goes haywire and starts producing proteins called autoantibodies that attack the body's cells, tissues, and organs instead of protecting them. This autoimmune attack can affect many body parts, including kidneys, blood cells, brain, heart, and and lungs. Because lupus causes your cells to attack you, symptoms can vary significantly from person to person because everyone is different. But common symptoms would usually include fatigue as your body will always be fighting itself against an imaginary attacker, joint pain and swelling as the fighting goes on, skin rashes, fever, and even total hair loss as even your hair cells are seen as enemies. When lupus causes inflammation in organs like the kidneys or heart, it can lead to severe and potentially life-threatening complications if not properly treated and managed. Despite you needing an exact sequence of events from issues with your environment to genetics to give you this condition, it's relatively common. It's estimated that around 1.5 million Americans and at least 5 million people worldwide have a form of lupus. It's much more common in women than men, especially women of childbearing age. Type 1 Diabetes Usually the idea of people with diabetes would be a person with a relatively poor lifestyle or just obese, but in particular individuals, it is not their lifestyle, but just an unfortunate dance with genetics, where the body's immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys the insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas. Behind the scenes, the pancreas usually releases insulin to help the body use or store glucose, sugar, from the food we eat. But in someone with type 1 diabetes, the immune system's autoantibody identify the beta cells as foreign invaders and destroy them. Without insulin to regulate blood sugar by telling muscles all over the body to take a certain amount from the blood, glucose builds up in the bloodstream to insane levels instead of being absorbed by cells in the body. This leads to high blood sugar levels, which can cause major damage throughout the body if not treated properly. Because you have so much glucose, your blood becomes hypertonic with more soluble particles than water. This means you experience constant extreme thirst or pee a lot as the body tries to get rid of the excess sugar. But over time, if blood sugars aren't carefully controlled, it can lead to heart and kidney disease, nerve damage, and other complications. People with type 1 diabetes need to take insulin via injections or an insulin pump every day to regulate their blood sugar levels. They must also closely monitor their blood sugar through finger pricks and diet to ensure it never goes out of range. Multiple sclerosis. Your nerves are essentially like electrical wires. In a healthy body, these wires have a special insulation called myelin, which helps the electrical signals zip along smoothly. Like an accidental electrical fire, the body's immune system malfunctions and attacks the myelin. This damages the insulation and disrupts the signals traveling through the nerves. When the myelin is damaged, it forms hardened sclerotic scar tissue or lesions that disrupt nerve communication. This is what causes the various symptoms of MS. Electrical signals can travel insanely fast in a healthy human body, reaching approximately 268 miles per hour along myelinated nerve fibers. Because of this, you can respond quickly to objects in your field of view. However, in people with multiple sclerosis, this speed can be reduced as the myelin sheaths are destroyed. In some cases, electrical signals may be slowed to a fraction of their normal speed with most studies estimating that they're around 50 to 75% slower than in healthy individuals. So, as you can imagine, a person with multiple sclerosis would respond to a pin pricking them 50% slower than healthier people. Because your nervous system is being attacked, you experience issues with balance and coordination, which can lead to dizziness, vertigo, and difficulties maintaining stability. Muscle spasms or stiffness may occur as your muscles receive weird levels of electrical activity, causing involvement voluntary contractions or discomfort. Vision problems and slurred speech may also occur as your body struggles to send the signals back and forth. Unfortunately, there's no cure for MS, but there are treatments that can help manage the symptoms, slow down the disease, and improve the quality of life for people with MS. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Even though almost half of the general public has no idea where their thyroid is, it doesn't stop it from being among the most essential organs in their body. 
Although it weighs less than 100 grams, the little butterfly organ in the neck ensures that the body produces heat via metabolism and even controls your mood. Like other autoimmune conditions, over time, due to getting caught in its non-existent war your body is fighting, inflammation weakens the thyroid, making it harder to produce enough hormones. This leads to a condition called hypothyroidism, or underactive thyroid. And as the little struggles to continue its duty, the effects can range from fatigue and weight gain from poor metabolism, hair loss, and sensitivity to cold as you can generate heat. With time, if left untreated, your thyroid will not give up, but instead try and increase in size, as the body's logic would be that you just need more of the thyroid organ, meaning you'll now develop an enlarged thyroid gland called a goiter in some cases. Hashimoto's is the most common cause of hypothyroidism, affecting around 14 million people in the United States alone. It primarily strikes middle-aged women, but can occur in men and women of any age. Addison's disease. On top of your kidneys sits two tiny glands, your adrenals. They make essential hormones, cortisol and aldosterone that act like body-wide messengers. The glands have difficulty producing these hormones over time as they are attacked. Although the current idea is that all forms of stress are bad and should be avoided, certain amounts of stress made the caveman with fire the smartest animal in the world. Evolutionarily, your body would interpret stress as something is wrong or something needs to be done and cortisol helps with the response. Without adequate cortisol, the body can't properly respond to stress and has trouble regulating metabolism, blood pressure, and inflammation, among other functions. Lack of aldosterone leads to low sodium and high potassium levels controlled by the kidneys. With lowered hormone production, Addison's disease throws a wrench into your body's systems. In rare cases, you can have a major issue called Addisonian crisis, which is an acute adrenal insufficiency where the adrenal glands above your kidneys are unable to produce the essential hormones needed for you to survive that will more often than not lead to death. While relatively rare, Addison's disease affects around 1 in 100,000 people. It can occur at any age but is most common between ages 30 to 50. With hormone replacement therapy, most people with Addison's can manage their symptoms effectively. Celiac disease. In an unlucky sequence of events that combine genetics and environmental factors, the bodies of people with celiac go into overdrive whenever they ingest any form of gluten from protein, whey, barley, and rye. When people with celiac ingest gluten, their immune system mistakenly views it as a threat and launches an attack. This inflammatory response damages the tiny finger-like projections villi, that line the small intestines. The villi are crucial for absorbing nutrients from food. When they're damaged, the body can't properly take in nutrients like proteins, fats, vitamins, and minerals from food. Because the body rejects the gluten in the food and begins to swell up the intestine, making it difficult to absorb more food, they get digestive issues like diarrhea, bloating, gas, and abdominal pain. Celiac affects about 1 in 141 people in the United States, though many may go undiagnosed. It can develop at any age after a person starts consuming gluten-containing foods. Therefore, usually, despite it being difficult for anyone who has spent their whole life eating croissants, the only current treatment is a strict, lifelong, gluten-free diet to allow the intestines to heal and prevent further autoimmune damage. Vitiligo Vitiligo is an autoimmune condition in which the body mistakenly attacks and kills its pigment-producing cells, causing patchy skin and hair color loss. It is not usually medically dangerous. While not really harmful to your health, most people in puberty react very negatively to things like acne or pimples. One can imagine how uncomfortable it can be to have different parts of your skin lose their original color to the point where sometimes you might even look like a new race. In this, autoantivirus bodies target and kill off these pigment-producing melanocytes in certain areas. This causes the skin to lose its natural pigmentation or color in blotchy patches. The effects on the body appear as flat white patches or spots on the skin that vary in size and location. 
The discolored areas most commonly appear on the face, hands, arms, legs, and around body openings. Hair in those areas may also turn prematurely white or gray. Estimates suggest vitiligo affects around 1-2% to of the global population, making it one of the more common autoimmune diseases. It often appears before age 20, though it can start at any age. There is no cure, but treatment options like light therapy, topical creams, and skin grafting may help restore some skin color for some patients. Myasthenia gravis Usually, nerves send electrical signals to muscles, telling them to contract and move. A chemical messenger called acetylcholine is needed at the connection point called the neuromuscular junction. Think of tiny locks, receptors, on the muscle and a messenger, acetylcholine, with the correct key. But in myasthenia gravis, the immune system intentionally makes faulty keys that don't fit the locks. This blocks the signal from reaching the muscle, leading to weakness. Muscles most affected are often those in the eyes, face, throat, and limbs. People with MG might experience drooping eyelids, difficulty swallowing, slurred speech, and muscle fatigue that worsens with activity. The weakness can spread to the arms, legs, neck, and respiratory muscles as it progresses. It can get worse to the point where the muscles around your lungs are unable to keep breathing in and out, and even with ventilators and life support, it won't be enough. MG is a chronic autoimmune disease, meaning it's long-lasting and affects the body systems. While the exact cause is unknown, it's relatively rare, affecting a small percentage of the population. There's no cure, but medications and treatment can help manage symptoms and improve quality of life. Rheumatic Fever in rheumatic fever, a child might develop a bad case of strep throat caused by a Group A streptococcus bacteria. Because kids usually get sore throats often most of the time, it's usually left to run its course. But in a few cases, because the antigen things the bacteria produce are somewhat similar to the tissue in the heart, joints, skin, and brain, instead of just targeting the bacteria, the immune system also turns its attention to these parts. This mistaken attack causes inflammation of these parts, leading to symptoms like fever, swollen and painful joints often moving from joint to joint, a red, bumpy rash, and sometimes involuntary movements or emotional changes. Usually in some cases, rheumatic heart disease is the most severe complication, where heart valve damage can lead to a heart murmur, shortness of breath, irregular heartbeats, and even heart failure if not adequately treated. Rheumatic fever is more common in children, but can affect anyone with untreated strep throat. The good news is that prompt treatment of strep throat infections can prevent rheumatic fever altogether. While there's no cure for rheumatic fever, medications can effectively manage the inflammation and prevent serious complications, especially damage to the heart valves.